Um, so, hi, welcome to Git 101, uh, led by Jose and with help from me. Uh, and uh, yeah, so um, what is Git? We're going to start there. So Git is a source control management tool, AKA like version control. And it was invented by Linus Torvalds of Linux. Um, and uh, you can save different versions of your source code in order to work collaboratively. So that means that like you and your friends could all be working on a project together and you wanna try something that adds to that project, but you want to do it in a way that doesn't affect their code until you, you're sure that it works. Also, if you were to make changes to code that was already kind of working and you weren't sure if they would be successful, you could save your state and then keep working, break it, and then revert to a previous commit if your code is broken. So, yeah. So, Let's start with this. So the basic quintessential Git workflow is that you take a file or several files and you Git add all of those files and then you commit those files with a message and then you push to origin main. So that's what everybody pretty much starts with when they're first learning Git. And to break that down a little bit, so you have git add file name. And what this does is it takes your local changes and it adds them to what's called the staging area. So now these changes are staged. And then git commit takes those saved changes and attaches them to a block of changes under a message. So there's a commit message and a commit hash and all of the changes are associated in this little block in this commit. And then uh, you push those changes, all of the commits that you have saved to uh, a remote repository, which is connected through a remote. Origin is the remote in this case. And then a certain branch of that repository. So in this case, we're on the main branch. So yeah, so we've got branches, remotes, uh, stage changes, and yeah. So I think Jose is going to take over with branching. Yeah. Um, so branching, it, it's one of like the as like the second bullet states. It's kind of like gets killer feature. Um, up until uh, Linus Torvalds sort of like like um, released Git. Uh, all other version control control tools weren't so good at branching just because it, it was very expensive um, because basically you basically copied everything that you had up to so far and made an, a new version of it and it did it that way so it was extremely expensive to um, to branch. Um, um, Linus Torvalds um, fixed that by having like a, um, a very intuitive approach to it. Um, you can look more into like the source code of branching on GitHub if if you so wish, uh, but we're not gonna like dive too much into detail on how um, uh, the implementations of branching. Uh, but basically, it diverges from your main line of development, and then you continue to do work without messing that main line. Um, Lev um, sort of like alluded to this a little bit earlier on and said, um, if you want to work on something but don't want to mess up the code that you have so far. You can branch off, break as much code as you want, and when you switch back over to your main uh, main branch, everything is intact um, without having those changes carry over. Um, and then one of the other uh, other key things: never work on main branch. Um, this is something that um, um, most of the time you don't get taught, like in school or stuff like that. Um, but you see a lot more of in um, what's it called? Um, uh, in in the real world, once you start actually developing for like a company or start developing in open source, um, in the, the reason industry, yeah, in the industry, uh, the main reason for it um, is because um, usually they make the releases off of the main branch, and so you want to be able, you want to make sure that your main branch is as stable as stable as it can, because essentially you're gonna be 
uh, uh, releasing that code, that version control or of, of the code um, to your customer. So you want to make sure that that works. Um, left, can you hit next? Yeah, sorry. Uh, we're also going to be covering commit messages. Um, this is something that you might want to get used to uh, more than um, just, as you can see, like the very last commit um, in this meme. It's just basically hands, right? Or, or like the, um, the difficult update uh, commit message and stuff like that. The reason being uh, for, for that is um, since most of the time in industry, you're gonna be, you're never gonna be working by yourself for the most part. Uh, you're gonna be working with other people. And so people might want to branch off of a particular commit. And so if that commit message um, doesn't have something useful attached to it, uh, it might be very difficult for people and even you uh, to try to make sense of what that commit was basically putting into the code. And so you wanna be able to make sure that you um, get as, um, as comfortable early on on writing good commit messages. Um, that way later on, um, if someone or even yourself has to branch off of a particular commit or going back to a commit, uh, you don't have trouble doing that. Right, and a, and a couple more things about what makes a good commit message. So there's actually, which was unintuitive to me at the time, but there's a special verb conjugation that you're supposed to use for your commit messages. So you don't use the past tense. So instead of saying created main loop and timing control, you're supposed to say create main loop and timing control. And Git actually enforces this. It doesn't enforce it, but if you push anything, if you upload anything um, onto GitHub, it'll automate it. It'll, it'll automatically give you a commit message, which is conjugated like that. Um, so that's something to be mindful of. The first uh, letter should be capitalized. Uh, you don't want your the first line of your commit message to be more than 50 characters. And something people don't really realize about commit messages is you can have multiple lines to a commit message, but the first one is what you're going to see when you when you look through your log of commit messages, and the rest is additional information. So if you try to keep this under 50 characters, you can go down a line and then have an empty line. And that means that after the empty line, there's all your comments. And then you can provide more information about what you changed in the body of the commit message. So the body, you could have a, a header for your commit that says add functionality for adder. And then you could have a body that says function for adding two positive numbers, added a function for checking if a number was negative. You know, you can have all the comments about the things that you change inside of the body. So that allows you to keep that first line under 50 characters, which presents well from the uh, Git log view and from GitHub. So, yeah. Okay, remotes. Right. Um, so believe it or not, you um, if you use GitHub before for any of your projects so far, you have been working with remotes um, this whole time. Uh, you just uh, might not have noticed. So remote repositories are just versions of your project that are hosted on the internet or network somewhere. Uh, and so if you're using GitHub to host your project, you are using a remote because um, the, uh, the code doesn't live on your computer. It lives on, on, a, uh, on a server owned by GitHub that they maintain. And so whenever you clone that repository, you're working on a local version of that, and then you push all your changes to that remote. Um, fun fact, Git is also an open source tool. So technically, if you have um, that tool downloaded on your machine, um, the sort of like remote source of control is gonna be your own computer if you're not using GitHub to host your project. You can use Git um, to basically um, um, manage your own projects on your local machine uh, without needing an external server. So Git and GitHub, they're two separate things, but they use the same um, like, like um, tool, which is Git. Uh, sorry, okay. All right, pull requests. Yeah, so these are um, very fun. Um, usually uh, they're done through GitHub. Git has a built-in request pull command but we won't be talking um, too much about it uh, because it, it, 
uh, it's not in the scope of this um, pre presentation and workshop. Uh, and as I said, they're mostly done through GitHub and it lets you tell others about changes that you pushed um, to a branch in a repository on GitHub. And so since I, um, when I stated before that you might wanna be working mostly on, on a branch and not on main, when you go ahead and make a pull request um, to main, all those changes that you worked on your branch are inside that pull request. And then it's up to someone to review them, whether or not those changes should be merged or they should be um, um, edited or adding more comments and stuff like that. Okay, cool, merging. Merging is important. Uh, if you branched and you've got multiple branches, how do you get back together? So, yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh, so this picture uh, is specifically useful, uh, but not necessarily um, re relating to merging. As you can see, you have two projects, right? That they both have different commit histories denoted by the different colored dots. Then when you go ahead and merge, you get some, some form of error. We're gonna go ahead and talk about how we can get around that error um, in, our, in the live coding part of it. Uh, but the, the, the same sort of like, idea is there. If you have on project one, that's your main line, right? Or, um, or your like development branch and project two is your main, uh, your main line. Um, if you see that the commits have gotten out of order, right? Uh, and you're trying to merge, you're gonna get an error, right? And so you wanna make sure that when you get those error messages, you don't freak out and say like, oh no, I broke everything. Uh, most of the error messages that you get on GitHub or on Git, um, you can work around them and you can make sure that your code is um, still functional, even if you get an error message. So do not worry. Uh, and then, yeah, as I stated, it's most commonly, most commonly done with branches. Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, we're gonna go ahead and do um, um, git fetching now. Uh, this tool uh, is partic uh, particularly useful uh, it basically just downloads um, objects and references from another repository uh, and then fetching from a remote, right? So say for example, um, you're working on your own branch, right? Uh, you're typing away happy as can be. And then when you wanna go ahead and switch back to main, say other people are working with you and other people may have uh, committed to main and may have uh, made a pull request to main before you could have pushed your changes. And so what you need to do is first, you need to bring those changes into your local repository. And then you need to check, okay, um, does, does this merge now? And if, if so, make a pull request and stuff like that. And so what get fetch does is just brings all the changes into your local machine, but nothing has been merged yet. Then you need to go ahead and merge. And so get fetch and get merge are two different operations but in order to fully bring all your changes in, you need to do a get fetch first and then a get merge to merge those changes back into main. That can be a little bit confusing, but we're, we're gonna work through it. Another alternative to using get fetch and get merge is just get pull. That's just gonna go ahead and pull from origin main. And that right. fetches and merges for you. Yeah. But what, one thing to note is uh, pull is basically just fetch and merge combined. So you don't have as much control over it. Uh, it is good to use, but it's important to know what that process actually entails. So we thought it would be helpful to present it this way. Um, yeah, I think that that is, yeah. All right, cool. This is our last slide, so. Yeah, and so if you wanna go ahead and practice, uh, make, like a, a, uh, make um, an example repo on your own GitHub, and go ahead and play around with it. Don't focus too much on the code because that, that's not what um, it's important. What you want to go ahead and do is get comfortable with Git and all the, um, um, everything it has to offer. Uh, don't be afraid to break things. You can always go back in 99% of the cases. <laughs> um, and then there's two links there. Um, I don't know why the first one I wrote it like that, just a hyperlink, uh, but we're going to go ahead and post those uh, links also on the um, the CS yeah, tutoring you'll, you'll have access to both of these links. Um, they're very good resources. They're interactive games. 
that you can play to help you develop your Git or other skills. In the case of Node School, so they've got one on Git, they've got one on Bash, they've got like 30 different ones on JavaScript, they've got one on regular expressions, they've got one on functional programming. It's pretty sick. Um, so yeah, so that's the end of our slides. I think that what we're going to do next is Jose is going to demo the development of a project using version control with you. And I'm gonna be working on it on the, at the same time so that we can show you how Git can be used to work together. So without further ado, let me switch screens over to Jose and we can get started with that. And then after that, we plan on having an interactive uh, Git project, which uh, we can all do together. All so yeah, yeah, everybody. So uh, can you put hyperlink in text chat? Uh, yes, sure. I got it. I got it. Okay, Jose can cool. start and I will put the links awesome. in the text chat. Okay. Uh, one of the other things, uh, but before I, I start sharing my screen and doing all this stuff, are there any questions or anything that you're like, I have no idea what you just said and I'm scared? Great. No, no, no one's scared. Great. I love it. Um, what is the pull request for our project one four? I believe you are talking about 2.12. Uh, right now we are, um, it's sort of like a more general Git workflow. Um, but essentially, uh, when you go ahead and make a pull request, uh, it basically, it takes a branch that, um, you already have or that it, or that GitHub, a bot can create for you. And basically you can write all code, code comments on there. And then um, after you get all that, you merge all that stuff into your main line. And then you can start developing from there and addressing comments there. Uh, that's sort of like one way to, to look at it. But essentially the pull request, um, this is for only 2.12, um, uh, CS 2.12. Um, it's essentially for the professor to make comments on your code and then you implementing that. Yes. Exactly. Um, one of the, okay, one of the assumptions that we're also gonna be, um, that I'm basing all this development from is that you have SSH keys set up on your machine and um, those are on GitHub. If you don't have SSH keys set up, do not worry, it's a super painless process. Um, Lev, could you go ahead and drop, actually I have that link, so I'm gonna go ahead and drop that there. Yeah, and you are, it is recommended to use SSH. If you don't have the time right now, if you can't, you can always type your password in, I guess. We will not do anything today that can't be done by typing your password a lot of times. Um, you shouldn't. Um, I don't know. It's up to you. Um, but the, yeah. yeah, there's two ways to go about this. If that's the case, if you really don't want to set up your SSH key, then... Uh, everything that we do, you should, rather than cloning SSH links on GitHub, you should select HTTPS. That is fundamentally the only change. And then be aware that you're going to have to type your password a lot of times. Otherwise, you can uh, work from this tutorial asynchronously uh, while we go through um, the rest of the topics. Uh, and if you have your SSH key already set up, then great, you are in good shape to get through the rest of this tutorial. Yes. Okay, I'm gonna start sharing my screen now. So that means that I won't be able to see a lot of questions on the chat. So if you have a question, feel free to unmute yourself and just shout at me um, for, for anything, okay? Sounds good. So let me go ahead and Share screen. All right. So, okay. Okay, let me move that. Okay, just moving Zoom around. Okay, so um, if you're familiar with this uh, with this page, but not my page, just anyone, uh, someone else's page, uh, or your own GitHub page, um, it's pretty pretty straightforward. You have a repository over here, right? Uh, we're gonna uh, I'm going to be working on this project. It's called Git 101, and that's one that you that you all are going to be cloning 
uh, and bringing into your own local um, local workspace um, at the end. So make sure to um, not go ahead and, and do this part of the coding along part. Um, the instructions for, um, for everyone will be a little bit later. So yeah, as you can see, um, um, Lev mentioned that you have two options, either HTTPS, SSH, and the recently added, the GitHub CLI. That we're not going to be focusing on that one, but the GitHub CLI is extremely helpful uh, if you don't ever want to leave the command line. So I'm going to be cloning all my stuff over SSH. Uh, also, I particularly don't like IDEs, so my part of the demo is going to be all done through the terminal. Um, Lev's is going to be done through Eclipse, and he's going to show you what that process is like of bringing that repo in and doing all that stuff. Yes, I have that all ready to go. So I will do some of these things, not all of them necessarily. It depends how I'm feeling in Eclipse um, after yeah. this. So if you're waiting to learn how to do this in Clinton Eclipse because you really don't want to use the command line, then you are, you are welcome to uh, know that I will be doing that later. Yeah. And so uh, one of the things I always recommend people when they ask me about GitHub and stuff like that is have a dedicated folder for all your get, get stuff that you know where it is. Um, and so I have mine inside my home directory. So I can just go ahead and go into Git. Uh, and here's where I keep a lot of my, uh, a lot of my GitHub stuff. Um, if I want to go ahead and say now clone that repository or in other words, have a reference to the remote that GitHub has uh, on their servers. I just go ahead and do git clone and that SSH um, 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 prompt that I was able to get from GitHub. Once I go ahead and do that, brings everything in, grip brings in all the remotes, great. Uh, then I have to just CD into it. As you can see, uh, in this example, I'm just gonna be working over uh, the tried and true FISBUS example. Uh, we're not gonna worry too much about the code or anything. This is really just Git, how to go ahead and get comfortable with Git. Uh, if you wanna go ahead and check what your, rem uh, what your what remotes you have, you can go ahead and do Git remote. It tells you, okay, you have one, which is just origin. Great, if I want a little bit more information on that, I can give it the flag dash VV. And here it tells you a little more information on that remote. So as you can see, it has the exact same one two, uh, two times. The reason for it is one is the fetch and then one is the push. You can have different ones where you fetch from something else, but you push to something else, right? And so uh, this is more commonly used with um, when you're forking a repository, which we're not gonna talk about today, but that's when they might be different. The fetch might be from origin upstream and the push might be to your local main branch. Um, if a lot of those words didn't make sense to you, that's completely fine because uh, we're not gonna be talking about forks, but most of the time they're gonna be the same. The origin is gonna for fetch and push are gonna be exactly the same. Great. Um, one of the other things, Lev is working on another project by himself right now uh, that I might want to look um, might want to look at later. So one of the ways in which I can do that is to add a remote to, um, um, yeah, adding a remote. And so uh, now you're going to be saying like, okay, um, basically maybe you're going to be doing the exact same steps um, that you did before, right? Uh, not really, right? I'm going to be doing a little bit a little bit differently. I'm not going to be cloning his project or or the other pro project into mine. I'm going to be adding a remote, which is basically just having a reference that then I can make changes to and then push those references. And so as you can see, they're basically almost exactly the same in terms of um, files and stuff. Um, Lev's is going to be a little bit different than mine is going to be. And so basically copying the exact same um, sort of like going to code, getting that dropdown, getting that SSH um, link. And then basically in order now to add a remote, I go ahead and do get remote add. And then it tells uh, the documentation specifies two things. Here, the shorthand, 
the shorthand name and the URL. The shorthand name for this, since Lev is going to be having, oops, what just happened? Since Lev is going to be basically having the, the real solution and mine is going to be just like a, a, a bad solution to Fizzbuzz, I'm going to name it 42. If you get why it's 42, great. Nice. Um, if not, don't worry about it. Uh, and the URL, I'm going to using the same SSH sort of like link. The reason why this and not the URL is because I have SSH keys set up. It's going to work the exact same way if you go ahead and do HTTPS or give it a real URL. But I have my SSH key set up and I don't want to deal with like an, uh, a URL. Great. And so now if I go ahead and do the get remote, it tells me, okay, origin and then 42. If I go ahead and say get remote and then the, the flag dash VV, it gives me, okay. And as you can see, it added two more. It added the 42 for the fetch and for the push, right? So now I have get 101 remote and get for um, fetch and get 101 underscore remote for the push. And then I have another one that's for just get 101. Any questions so far into what I've done and what this all means? All right, cool. Feel free to interrupt me, ask questions, stuff like that. Um, I, I, I won't mind answering a question. <laughs> um, so let's go ahead. I have there my fist buzz. Great, okay. So right here, I have a basic Java implementation of it, right? And I did something that uh, I shouldn't have done and that is working on mainline, or on the main branch. Now, in order to display which branches you have on the command line, you can just do get branch. That just tells you um, the current branch that you're on. If you go ahead and do get branch dash A, it tells you all the branches that there are. And you see now you have three other ones, right? You have this remote origin head. This one's pointing to origin main. This one is remote origin main, right? And this one is remote origin test PR. And you're like, whoa, what's that remote origin test PR? Uh, that one, I was actually in, pre in preparation for this, right? Uh, for, the, uh, for this workshop, I actually went ahead and um, added a separate branch, which if you go to that repository and you click here, this little button, um, let me move some stuff. How can I draw? There we go. Yeah. Right here, this little button. That button can go ahead and tell you which branches I'm on. So if I go ahead and click it, I have one that is like test PR um, that I'm not going to be using right now, but there's that one, right? Um, and those are the branches that are on the remote. Those branches are not local branches. And so if I go ahead, let me just go ahead and get a bit of that. What's the time? 133. All right, we're good on time. Awesome. Now we're here, we're back on the terminal, right? Uh, let me go ahead and create a branch. Or in order to first create a branch and then go into the branch, one of the things you could do is get checkout dash B. And, and then the name of the branch. What this does, it basically creates a branch by first doing get branch dash B, right? It creates that branch, but you haven't switched onto it yet. By then being able to switch onto it, you write get checkout. Uh, and so if you combine those two with get checkout dash B, it creates the branch and then you, uh, you move um, over to it. And then you get a little nice, error, uh, the nice message, switch to a new branch, dev. Um, uh, this is um, especially um, sort of like personal, but I like to name my branches, like keep keep them minimal. So I usually just have three branches, one for the main, one that's um, for development called dev, and one for review, it's just called, and just called review. That way, if there are any reviews that need to happen on main, I, I bring those changes over to review, um, add those changes, and then make a pull request to that main. Um, that's how I like to work. And then anything that's development, I 
write it on development. And whenever I need to make a pull request, I make a pull request to main from dev. That's how I like to do it. Um, you can do it however you see fit. Um, there's really no right or wrong way to do it. All right, so now let's go ahead and write a little bit of code. I will purposely write bad, um, bad uh, formatted code because Lev is gonna be writing the nicely formatted code. Um, that way I can go ahead and bring those changes in. Okay, um, if anyone, has anyone heard of FizzBuzz or what the problem really is? Can someone just like, just sh um, shout? I can't see the chat. So just like say yes, no. Yeah. Yeah, all right, cool. Okay, so basically the whole um, like thing with FizzBuzz is that you basically loop through if I, if I mod 15, is zero, you print out fizzbuzz. If I mod uh, five, you print out fizz. If I mod three equals zero, you print out buzz. Um, because I don't, I'm gonna pretend that I don't know what fizzbuzz is. I'm gonna go ahead and say, I think if I mod 16 equals zero, I'm gonna go ahead and do a system that out that print line. This buzz, and then just adding a little space just for a little bit of formatting. Um, if I mod four, then we go ahead and do another system, just that out that print line. I'm lazy, so I'm just going to go ahead and copy some of this stuff over. And we're going to format it super horribly because why not, right? If it's um, system, if, if it's mod four, and then I wrote some errors here that I didn't catch. So zero, zero. That's great. Um, if it's mod four, just go ahead and print out um, this. And then if I mod, someone give me a number between zero and a hundred. Seven. I heard a lot of things. I think seven. I heard seven, so awesome. And then I'm gonna go ahead and print out uh, this. Over the yank it. Oopsies. So I'm just yanking this line real quick. Awesome. And then I don't want to print fizz if it's seven. I want to go ahead and print out bus. And so as you can see, this is horrible formatted code, and that's okay for this for this example only. Um, don't don't do this in real life or this is real life, but don't do this on any projects that you do. Um, people will yell at you or not yell at you, but just like give you a stern look saying, and just saying, please fix this. And then I just go ahead, if it's not mod zero for any of these, we're just gonna go ahead and print out the little number, a little space. Because although I may not write great formatted code, I still want the output to be nicely formatted. And sure, why not? Let's go ahead and just move this over here and this one as well. Doing great, awesome. Let's go ahead, write that out. Um, a little um, sort of like trick, uh, quote unquote trick in order to um, run Java code right on the command line, just go ahead and do Java C and then the class name, it compiles, and then just do Java this bus. Great, awesome. It did a bunch of stuff, love to see it. Okay, then I have this Fizzbus class. Um, I don't wanna really go ahead and commit um, Fizzbus.class. 
Now I'm going to teach you what it looks like when your changes are unstaged versus staged. Let's go ahead. If you do a, a, a get status right on the command, you see that I have changes not staged for commit right here at the top that are, and this one is called modified fizzbuzz.java. And I have untracked files, which means that these are files that were just added that GitHub does, does not know about. There's two things in the chat. When you merge a branch with another, does the current branch get deleted? No, okay, yeah, thanks, Lev. Right, so we have um, these two things. So I don't really wanna go ahead and add fizzbuzz.class to it. I literally, all I could do is just not add it to my, to my tracking. So I can just do get add. If I do a get add dot, that will add everything. It'll add modified files and it'll add untracked files. So sometimes you might wanna go ahead and do a get add, right? If you have other things such as like a make file that cleans a lot of this stuff for you. But if you don't, in this case, we just wanna go ahead and do a get add. Um, I just wanna do get add fizzbuzz.java. Once I go ahead and do that, if I do a get status, you see now that they change color, right? Uh, it tells me, okay, I'm on branch dev, change to be committed, modified fizzbuzz.java and untracked files are fizzbuzz.class. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and commit. Um, okay, now there's two things that here you, you wanna watch out for. The first, mostly never use get commit dash M um, and then the quote, right? Uh, that because um, the reason for it is you have no clue what is past 50 characters on, the, uh, on most cases. So if you just do get commit, it pulls up this lovely, um, this lovely editor, it's Vim uh, in my case, uh, but you can map it to whatever you want. Um, where you can then go ahead and do, uh, write your commit message here. And so, uh, because I have a horrible, um, not, not horrible, I'm going to write a good commit message. Uh, and because I, I also don't want to use any past tense stuff, um, add my, or finish implementation of and I think that might, oh, I think that's below 50. Um, horribly formatted, but hey, it works. Okay, I go ahead and add the, um, added, added that. Um, if I say, for example, I will check um, what I've committed in the past, uh, I can do go ahead and do a get log. And that shows me everything that I've added, really. And you can scroll through your commit history and look at the commits. You can check the author, the date, and the little message. Um, as you can see right here, uh, I added this workshop prep, right? Um, I'm, I'm at 11 today. Uh, and you can see where that commit is at. That commit is over at origin main, origin head in main, right? And then this one, it's at head dev. Head is just a fancy word for saying where I am, uh, really, or where the, the head of the repository is pointing to. Right now it's at dev, right? And so say I accidentally go back to main, it says switch to switch to branch main. It's up to date. And great. If I go ahead and say now, if I go into here, it tells me, hey, nothing is there. And the reason why is because I branched off. Once I branch, all changes that were made on that branch stay there. And also because I committed them. And the reason, because we're able to see fizzbuzz.class is because it's untracked by Git, meaning that if it's untracked, it doesn't go ahead and add it to, uh, what's it called? It doesn't add it to, to that remote. It just stays there locally. 
So if I go ahead and do a get checkout um, dev, and now I'm like, okay, that dot class um, file is driving me bonkers. So let me go ahead and get rid of it. Now it's no longer there. If I do a get status, on branch dev, nothing to commit. I'm working on a on a on tree clean. Great, awesome. Okay. So I'm there. How are you doing, Lev? Um, where, where are you at? Are you are you finished with, with your stuff? Right on. So um, I, I do have it all, all prepared. So uh, yeah, we can switch over to mine if you want. Um, just yeah, whenever. yeah. Cool. Yeah, let's go ahead. I'm right done on. with my part. So um, now I'm going to stop sharing and I'm, uh, I'm going to let Lev share and see what he worked on. Thank you so much, Jose. All right. I'm sharing my screen now. So I'm going to go to desktop two. There we go. Do you do you guys see me? No. Okay. Uh, no. Wait. Yeah, we can see now. Which screen? Can you see this uh, screen? Yeah, we can see that. We can see your entire desktop, so we can see the background of Eclipse as well. Okay. Cool. All right. So here is um, here is fizzbuzz.java. Um, so I need to code this. And does anybody know the rules of FizzBuzz? Can somebody explain them to me? Has anybody coded FizzBuzz before? Nobody? Nobody's coded yeah. FizzBuzz? Yeah, you have. What are the rules? Um, it's divisible by three. Print okay. Fizz. Oh, print Fizz? Okay. Yeah. If it's divisible by three, then I'm going to print Fizz. And then what what happens if I print buzz? Uh, divisible by five. Oh, cool. Um, and then both for fizz buzz. Ah, so if I modulus three equals equals zero, and I modulus five equals zero, and then what happens if it's not divisible by three or five? You just print out the number. Just print out the number. Nice. Okay, cool. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to run it. Just make sure that it works. Cool. So that appears to be working. Maybe just for the sake of, you know, having people know what it's going to do. I'm going to add a Java doc. So I've got this class. I'm going to be like, this class returns or prints numbers between zero and 100. If the number is divisible by both three and five, print fizzbuzz. If it's just divisible by three, print fizz. If it's just divisible by five, print buzz. Awesome. So now I think that that is looking great. I've got a warning from an unused import because we don't use java.util. I'm gonna delete that. I have no more warnings in my, uh, in my code. And now I think that I'm ready. I'll just run it one more time to make sure. Isn't that better to, to write I am mod 15 instead of using and? Oh, that is better. You're right. That's super clean. So if something's divisible by three and something's divisible by five, then it must be divisible by 15. So I modulus 15 equals zero saves us half a line. So that is really smart using those common multiples. So awesome. So now we have some pretty clean code. So that looks really good. Awesome. So run that one more time just to make sure we're good. I didn't type have a typo or anything when I added that very, very impressive implementation. And now I'm going to want to add this file to the index, which I think it already has been added. But um, yeah, but I need to add it again, right? So I'm going to add it to the index. 
right? And all of the Git stuff is in team. Uh, one nice thing about having it be under team, I believe, is that if you were to use another version control strategy like SVN, I believe that your team options would show up here too. I'm not sure, don't quote me on that. I only use Git, but it's cool that they're all sort of centrally located here. And within the team panel, I have all of my options for things I could want to do. You can see I can merge, I can rebase, I can control my remotes, you know, I can switch to a different branch. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add it to main. I'm gonna push directly into main for now. Uh, so I add it and now I want to commit it. So I'm gonna go to team, I'm gonna go to commit and you're gonna see this, this console pop up and we've got no more unstaged changes. I've got a couple stage changes. You're gonna see here, I'm looking at my stage changes. So I added fizzbuzz.java and notice uh, I don't want this to, it added, Eclipse added files for me to make it able to compile fizzbuzz within my own IDE. Those aren't global, right? Jose is using a different IDE. So I'm thinking I don't want to add my, uh, my variables. You know, the things that were necessary for me to run it in Eclipse, I just wanna add the modifications I made to the file that we're sharing. So I unstage the things that Eclipse created for me to run it in Eclipse. And I'm just going to uh, add fizzbuzz.java because that's the only file I was asked to help out with. So now I'm gonna take my commit message here and I'm gonna say, add fizzbuzz implementation. And then I accidentally uh, pushed it, uh, but I was gonna add a comment, but that's okay. So <laughs> um, I did not know that enter would not give me a new line. That is something I just learned right now. So uh, now I think that it pushed, I'm not sure. I could have just committed. And the way that I'm gonna check is I'm gonna go back to Git, I'm gonna go to team, and I'm going to say push to branch main, just to be sure. Um, Push not permitted. Oh. Um, hmm. Um, well, this may be unexpected. So I, th I think I know how to fix it. Give me a sec. Yeah. Okay. Stand by. I think I also know what the issue is, but we're gonna work on that. Give me a second. Um, if anyone has any questions right now regarding Git, uh, feel free to ask them right now or anything that we've just done or anything. It's completely fine if you have no, if, have, if, if you have no clue what we just did. Uh, this is what the uh, workshop is for, and it's a judgment-free zone. If you have a question of what is a remote or like what does like what did branching do, go ahead and ask ask those questions right now. Yeah, and just to remind you, because I've seen two people leave, we are going to have an attendance sheet in about ten minutes, so please try to, to try to hold on. Um, but one thing I will talk about right now is this idea of contributors on a repository. So when you have a public repository, anybody can uh, clone it, but you need permission to push to it. And so you need to add the people you want to work on it with you as contributors to the repository. And so a lot of open source repositories, they'll have a lot of people who aren't necessarily owners or contributors to the repository making contributions. But the way they would do that is they would clone the repository or not clone, they would, they would yeah. They would fork the repository and make changes on their own version of the repository. And then they would submit a pull request from another fork rather than from another branch. But if you want somebody to be able to push to a branch or create a branch uh, on your remote, on GitHub, on your actual repository, uh, you need to create a, you need to add them as a contributor, which is uh, just an interesting fact. That's, we, we forgot to do that today collectively. I yes. So, and actually, let me actually show you what that process is like. Um, yes. I feel like that's a good, yes. that's a good idea. Yay. <laughs> cool.
completely lost. Don't worry. We, uh, we will try to explain everything to you. And hopefully by the time that you do like your own part of it, you, uh, you'll uh, actually know um, a little bit more, hopefully less lost than you currently are. And so as you can see, I'm here on my, uh, on my own, um, what's it called? Uh, my own GitHub page. And this is like the get remote uh, um, repository, the one that Lev, that Lev is working on. And if I actually go here on uh, on code, right, uh, uh, he wasn't able to push his changes. So like, if you look at the commit history, nothing, uh, um, his commit is not there because he's not able to push, right? And so, but if you go over to settings on any of your repositories and you go to manage access, it takes you here and it takes you who has access, right? It takes you here to this, rep the, this public repository is public and visible to anyone, meaning it, as Lev said, anyone can look at what you're doing and then direct access. One has access to this repository. And right here, Lev accepted my invite, thank you very much. Uh, because I went ahead and added him by doing an invite a collaborator here. Uh, then when I'm able to say, for example, do really anything, uh, I go ahead and do that um, um, anyone. Like if I wanted to go ahead and add, who's who's on the call? Or someone give me a, a, a GitHub username that, um, Put it in the chat. Gotcha. Okay. So let's see. Uh, so, oops. Not the window I want to type. Uh, sad. If I wanted to go ahead and add Steven, I can go ahead and add him there, right? And then I can click add sad Selikov to the repository if I wanted to. Right, uh, but that was basically the process that you go through. Then you send an invite through email, and then it's up to the person that that person uh, to then accept. Uh, and then thankfully, Lev has now accepted the invite, and so now he's going to be able to push. So let's go ahead and see what that uh, whole process on Eclipse is like. Yes, thank you, Jose. Awesome. So this is the first speed bump we have hit in Git, and notice how quickly we solved it. The next one will be merge conflicts, but this is the first one. We did it on purpose and it was fun. Okay, um, all right. So um, do you see my screen now? Yeah. Is it the screen with Eclipse? Yeah. Okay, yeah. we're making sure we're making progress. So now I'm gonna push my add FISBOS implementation to main on Git 101 remote. I'm gonna preview that. I'm gonna say push and I believe that it was successful. So now I'm going to close and I've made all of these changes on the remote. So now I believe Jose is going to want to take these changes from my remote and bring them into his own repository. And uh, he will show you what that looks like. Yeah, so, uh, and then just to like double check, make sure that those changes were pushed because sometimes GitHub has its um, slow days, right? Uh, and just making sure that that um, got to GitHub. And then as you can see, Lev, thank you so much. You added your FISBUS implementation and then I can go ahead and check what those changes were. Um, great, awesome. Thank you for that. Now I'm back in my, on my terminal, my, my home, right? Um, now, as you can see, if I go ahead and just, let's see, uh, right? Uh, those changes are not yet, um, I can't see them, right? Um, because they're on two separate repositories. I'm working on get 101 and Lev is working on get 101 remote. And so then you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Now you're saying there's two repositories and you have your own branches on your thing. How are you gonna be able to pull in changes from that Lev just made to a whole different repository? And the way that I do that is um, I, uh, I let you all know that I added the remote early on, right? So now I have this 42, right? Um, which is quote unquote for like the answers, um, a little reference right there. Um, but um, remote 42 has the answers that I want, uh, but I don't know what those answers are. Um, so let's see, let's go ahead and do a get checkout. 
dash B. And I want to make sure that these changes that I made in Git uh, or um, to have a nice descriptive branch name for this, because this branch name is going to have code that's on a whole different repository. And what I want to basically happen is to have the main remote, or if I wanted to, I can just do main 42, right? Because that references that it's main branch for remote 42, because you can have way more remotes. You can have a lot of remotes. And so that now changed over to uh, a new branch. And say, for example, if I wanted to go ahead and check, okay, and get branch dash VV, this is a new command we're learning in the command line. That shows me the branches that I have, right? And so as we can see, we have our uh, main 42 branch. This is a local branch. We have main that's tracking uh, origin main, and we have a dev. As you can see, dev and main 42 don't have the little square brackets with origin slash main because mm -hmm. those branches are not tracking anything. Those branches are just local to your machine, so those won't appear anywhere else. If I say wanted to now go ahead and track, uh, have a branch track a remote, I can do a, I can go and do get branch dash. Um, I need to put the name of the branch, which is main 42, and then dash dash set upstream to, right? I can now have it um, be at a specific, uh, tracking a specific branch, right? And so let's say I want to go ahead and track um, 42 or 42, and then I believe it's with a slash doesn't exist. I believe it's because it's the wrong format. Let's see, uh, what was the command? Let's get branch dash, or actually I'm gonna do a get pull instead, dash u, and then that tells me to 42 main. And that gives me a bunch of error messages because it's telling me what. It goes ahead and tells me unknown switch u. Oh no. And so one of the very nice things, right, is about just get in general, there's a bunch of documentation online that's super helpful. And so what I want to do is I want to have a branch track a specific remote, right? And so if I go ahead, oh, I conveniently have this web page on my desktop. Um, I can just go ahead at remotes, right? But what I really want, right, is um, get have branch track remote. I have horrible spelling, so forgive me. Right, and it gives me a bunch of documentation, a bunch of graphics, and right here, uh, when I want to go ahead and push stuff, or right here, get checkout dash B, right? This is the command that I should have used, right? Because then I can have the name and then I can have the remote tracking a specific branch. And so let's go ahead and actually follow that, uh, follow that convention. And so if I just, let me, switch back to a different one. I want to go ahead and delete the branch that I just did, which is done by get branch dash D, right? And then uh, for main, main 42, error, the branch is not fully merged. Are you sure you want to delete it? Yes, I want to delete it. So I haven't done anything on it, right? And so if I follow the same convention that like, the documentation is telling me, I should just do a get checkout. dash B, right? And then the name of it, which is uh, main 42. And then I wanted to track a specific remote. In this case, my remote is called 42. I wanted to track main. It's not a commit and a branch main 42 cannot be created for it. Oh, I think I added. 
They're in the wrong place. Name for the two is not a commit. Oh, stash B. Am I missing something? Give me one sec. Lev, would you like to explain some things about what I'm doing? Wait, can you uh, explain like something about branches? Like how are they useful? Because usually I just push to main and like haven't used other branches before. Yeah, dude, absolutely. That's a really good question. So um, let's go to a project. So are you in software development? Presumably you are. I don't know if you actually are, but if you are, you're developing software, but you're not really developing software the way that it happens in industry. You're emulating that process in so far as you get code reviews and you build a large scale system. But one thing you'll notice is, hey, I'm developing this large scale system by myself. And that's really impressive that you can build a large scale system by yourself. But when you go to industry, a lot of people are working together and you'll notice every time you try something, the website doesn't crash, right? So let's say you have a full stack web application and you've got three backend developers, you've got two React.js developers on the front end, you've got some designers adding like images and, and you know, utilities and things like that. You've got database engineers and you've chosen to use a mono repo for some reason. So everything is in the same repository, okay? So now let's say that you've been given this task to add a new table to the database and then provide new API endpoints. So it's pretty simple. It's like you used to just have users and the users had posts and now you want to add messages. And it's like, cool, but you already have 100,000 users. So they're using the website all the time. Now you're gonna start writing code and you're gonna need to test it. It's not gonna work right away. You can't do that in the same place that that code is running from, one. And you can't do that in the same place other people are making changes necessarily because there might be a few different you know, things that people need to test. And if they're all changing at the same time, well, none of them can test their own feature in a vacuum because everybody else is half broken things at the same time, right? And you wanna be able to commit your processes, progress as you go along. So maybe I'll check out a branch from the last commit that was fully functional on main and I will name my branch add messages. And I will go from there, I will add, you know, I will add, my messages table to the database. I will add my API endpoints. I will add, you know, some stuff to view those messages in the in the web when I type a URL. And each time I add one of those things, it's just a incremental change. It won't run fully functionally, but by the time I get to the end, I will have this completed thing and I'll be like, cool, I'm ready to put a pull request in and the principal engineer, a senior engineer will review it, make sure that it goes well with everything. We'll make sure the unit tests are all fleshed out. I'm not forgetting any edge cases. And then I will be able to merge or rebase into master uh, depending on how I wanna preserve my commits. And then I will have added a feature to a large scale system and that's what they're paying me for, right? Is that a, is that a good answer? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Cool. Okay, what time is it? 2.09, so. Um, uh, right. It's great. Uh, I fixed the issue that I, that I had uh, with, my, with my branching. And so let me go ahead and share that. And I'm gonna go ahead and, and show you all what that, uh, what that error was. Okay, and so now I'm here, right? And so as you can see, I left off from right here. I deleted that branch that I had, but I said, eh, really, I, I really wanted it. So I brought it back. I switched over to it. And then when I do a git pull 42 and then main, right? 40 being the remote that Lev um, wrote to. 
and then main is the branch because uh, lev wrote to main branch, right? Uh, so it's right there. And then it goes ahead and does all these things. Uh, it brings it in and then it's telling me, uh oh, auto merging, fizzbuzz.java, conflict content. There's a merge, merge conflict. We have a oh, merge no. conflict. And so, um, uh, can you say like yes, or like if you've gone a merge conflict before and you're like, uh, what is this? Please, someone help me. I have no clue what this means. Just like on the chat, just like voice it out or something. I'm impressed. No one has had a merge conflict before, which is totally fine. Uh, oh, there were things in the chat. Yes, yes. A lot of people have had merge conflicts before. That's awesome. And that's a totally normal thing. And so when you go ahead and say, okay, it's telling me there's a merge conflict in, in Fizzbuzz Java. Okay, let's go ahead and go to Fizzbuzz Java. And it's right here. And now I'm faced with like this whole thing. It was like, what, what is all this? Like I have a head over here with some weird syntax with code here. And then I'm like looking at this, I'm like, oh, look, this is Lev's code. This is, this is what I want, right? And so I'm just looking at it and just like, oh yeah, it was 15, mod 15, mod three and mod five. And he has comments and he has like way better formatted. I want this. So what you go ahead and do, if you look at head, head is what you have on your branch. Most of the time when you're merging, you don't want to keep the stuff that's on head. Sometimes you do, right? But we really want to go ahead and keep Lev's code. So I'm like, cool, awesome. Let me go ahead and take that. Get rid of that. Thanks, Lev. Right? And so now if I do a git pull 42 main again, it's saying pulling is not possible because I have unmerged files. Oh no. And if I go ahead and do a get status, it's telling me, okay, modified fizzbuzz. I do the same thing I did, get add, get commit dash M. And then here, because it's gonna be a shorter commit message, I can just go ahead and do dash M and then bring uh, bringing in remote. Great, awesome. And if I do a, uh, a get pull again, it's telling me, okay, it's fetching already up to date. Awesome, cool. And so if I then go ahead and do a get branch dash VV to see where my remotes are at, you can see now main 42, right? It's still not tracking anything, right? It's a local branch that's not tracking anything, but I pulled in Lev's work by doing the get pull 42 being the remote and the branch name. And then I want like, okay, I want this in my code. So I do a get checkout dev. I switched over, right? If I go ahead and open up this bus, right? It's my poorly formatted code. As you can see, those changes didn't carry over because the changes on that branch stayed on that branch because I added them and committed them. As you can see, I haven't pushed anything, which is great. And so, what I want to go ahead and, and do now is do a get merge. And I want to go ahead and merge the, uh, the, the branch I was just on, which is main 42. Yes. And it's telling me conflict again. I was like, oof, okay. I have another merge conflict. And it's because of the same thing. It's because here it's looking at the code and it's telling, okay, there are differences in the code and get doesn't know what you want to go ahead and add or what you want to remove. And as you see, the difference now in the code are different, right? Because my main 42 branch, um, I created that branch from main, which is empty, right? And then because I have stuff here inside dev that actually had quote unquote working code, right? But not greatly formatted. The, the differences are on different lines. And so there's a message. And so right now, this is the last thing we do before the interactivity. So let's go ahead and go ahead and get rid of this. I wanna keep left's code. So let me go ahead and do that. Awesome. Um, I'm gonna do a get add, get dash m 
and then now I'm merging the remote. Great. And then now if I switch over back to my main branch, everything is up to date. I want to do go ahead and do the exact same workflow that I did, but now on a different branch, right? Or if I want to go ahead and just push directly to main, not a not the greatest idea, but I'm not gonna do that. So let's go ahead and do a get merge dev, right? Everything is fast forwarded, everything got got in there, and let's go ahead and just check. Awesome. It's the exact same stuff. Great. Now I want to do a get push. Great. And so now it tells me, okay, to GitHub, uh, get 101.get. And so now I'm back here on GitHub. Where is GitHub? Right, there's the get 101 remote. I haven't committed anything, so that's the, that stays empty. Let's go ahead back to get 101. As you can see now, this stuff has 20 commits because I also brought in um, um, Lev's commit into my repo that give has no idea that even existed, right? But in this case, he does. And so now, fizzbuzz.java on the remote, it has now two contributors. It has me and it has Lev because this is Lev's code. So that's that. So. Uh, that's it for the part on like in, uh, on our end of showing some of the stuff, how it works. Now we want to go ahead and put you all to the test. All right. So I, I created a repository for this. I don't know if there was one already, but um, so if you guys can go to USF CS 212 fall 2020 GitHub. So I'm going to walk you guys through this. So this is an interactive activity. This is how you're going to get credit for today, um, unless zero people do it, in which case I, I do have screenshots of the chat. But um, so if everybody could go to here, actually, if everybody could go to this repository specifically, I'm going to walk you through this interactive activity. Basically, we have a repository. And the name of that repository is Git 101 Attendance. And what I'd like everybody to do, and I'll, I'll go through this with you step by step, is I'd like to see everybody fork that repository, add their name to the attendance sheet, and then submit a pull request for me fr from their repository. So does everybody feel confident about doing that if I walk you through it? Does any, anybody have any reservations? Is anybody still listening to me at this point? What do you mean by fork? So that's what I'm going to show you. Okay, so uh, you you're going to create your own version of this repository in your own um, in your own. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. In your it's going to belong to you. So this one belongs to. That's actually why I had it owned by this class. You can only fork a repository once. So this one's going to. If I wanted to fork it on my own personal GitHub, I click fork and I select. I should fork it into Levin Weinstein because that's my my account. That's my name. So, so now uh, that's what we're gonna do. So is everybody ready? Okay. Here. Yeah. Yeah. If you have to go right now, you can check the recording as long as your name is here in the next 24 hours or 48 or whatever. Okay. So, uh, but if you have any questions, you won't be able to ask them later. So, all right. So we're gonna click fork from this repository. And the, the, what we're going to do is we're going to fork to our own accounts. And it should say it'll only take a few seconds. Is everybody with me so far? Is anybody behind? Yep. Does, any, does anybody need me to go slower? All right. So we're going to fork it. Quick and question. Where was the fork button? Is it the top? The top, top right. Yeah, top right. Cool. So we've got 17 forks. So we're making good progress. That isn't 29. Um, I'm going to wait until I get to 25. Oh, 22. We're going up. Okay. 23. I'm going to assume the rest is just GitHub lag. So, okay. So, uh, cool. So the, the easy way to do this. So this is just going to be pull requests because we don't have a lot of time. Uh, we're not going to clone anything right now. The easiest way to do this would be to add to the markdown file right here. Right? So when you add your name right here, 
and you can commit your changes. I would prefer that you say like, add my name or like add Levin to the, you know, read me. List. <laughs> because that way, when I rebase all of the commits, um, yeah, to the attendance list, yeah. When I rebase all the commits, I'm actually gonna keep the commits and we're just gonna have a, a list of all of our names getting added to the attendance, right? So, and then you can put a message to me here, like this tutorial was so fun. You two are the best or, you know, or whatever else you wanna say. And uh, commit directly to the main branch. And the reason that we would commit to the main branch is because we've already forked. Does that make sense? So we've already forked. We're making a pull request into the actual main repository. So now we have this and we're going to say, we're gonna go back here and we're gonna see that it says, this branch is one commit ahead of USFC S212 fall 2020 main. So Levin Weinstein main is one commit ahead. So I'm gonna have this really convenient button here to submit a pull request and ask that the owner of the other repository incorporate my changes. So we're gonna go ahead, everybody with me, and we're gonna click this button. Great. So now we're gonna see what the proposed changes are. I'm gonna say, hey, I would like to add my name. We're gonna click create pull request. Okay. So now we can specify what the, the pull request message is and what the comment is. And notice if we just have one commit, it's gonna auto populate with what our one commit was. And that's great, that's what we want. And so we're gonna click create pull. Well, first we're gonna, we're gonna add, let, if you're not me, you can add me as a reviewer or you can add Jose as a reviewer. But either way, you can add both of us. I can't add myself because I can't review my own pull request. So add both of us as reviewers, and then we're going to click create pull request. And you should see that we have a pull request. We're, propo we're proposing a change to the code base. Um, it has our name. So that's how Jose and Levin will know that you came here. Um, it's only one commit. We don't have any tests to run to verify whether or not we're, we should be pulling this in. And yeah, we know who the reviewers are. So once they say it's all okay, we'll be able to merge. And currently there's no merge conflicts. So now if I go back to the main repository, you're gonna uh, see- Quick quick side note, um, is, is everyone able to commit changes to their fork? No, I can't. I can't either. Huh. Eight people can. So what's what's going on? Did when I tried to add the you guys are so fun and all that, I wrote everything in, but it the commit changes button is grayed out. Hmm. Do are I have are to... you sh uh, are you working on the fork or are you working on, on the uh, on the main repo. So that's cool. I wanted to have like time for this. So that's why we stopped the last part a little early. So uh, would you be open to sharing your screen to go through? Because at the end of the day, if, if only eight people get through this, then like we're, we're like, I have a screenshot of the chat, right? But, but like the goal, like, did you click fork first? Did you fork the repository? Did you go back to your own repository? Are you sure you're in like your your name slash attendance instead of USFCS two twelve fall twenty twenty slash attendance. Yeah. Okay. And and what is it saying? Um, it's my name get attendance and then I clicked on editing the the file. Uh, wrote please add attendance or my name to attendance. Added the extended description, but commit changes is. Like so, the button is not working. So you did you put this and then like this? Yeah. Oh, it's grayed out for me too now. Oh, I haven't changed anything. 
Wait, so if I, if I put an A. So did you already commit changes maybe? Try, try changing this file like a little bit to see if you already committed changes. Did that help? It helped me. Uh, does it matter what we change or just whatever? I mean, yeah, um, ide ideally you'd say your name, but I mean, at, at this point, like, let's get it working. <laughs> just to clarify, at the bottom, we stay on commit directly to the main branch, correct? Yeah, you can. Yes. Yeah, yes. Because we're, we're, remember, we have remotes and we have repository. We have repositories, we have remotes, and we have branches. One of these needs to be different to, to propose a change. We are forking, which means we're taking a separate repository. So we don't need to be on an alternate branch because we're already on an alternate repository. But one of these things has to be different so that we're not affecting the code of somebody else. Right? Mom worked down. Okay. Nice. Is anybody still stuck? We still have four minutes and I'm willing to go over. We don't have to, but um, does, is anybody still having trouble? Let's check how many pull requests, requests we have now. Yeah, so we have 25 forks. Let's check how many pull requests we have. Good idea. So, okay. Uh, 19, 19. So we're almost there, we're almost there. 25 forks out of 29 people who showed up, which is okay. And then we've got 19 pull requests. So we're doing really good. Um, we're almost there. For the six people who are in this call who have made forks and who are still stuck, um, you can private message us if you want. I don't want to put you on blast. But like, what are you stuck on? One of the questions on the chat is, what do you do after the commit? After the ah. commit, what you want to go ahead and do is go back over to get the USFCS 212, uh, uh, to basically this one, and then you uh, click, Wait. let's go ahead and, and have left show us. Yeah, so, okay. So I added an extra commit, right? So when it says this branch is one commit ahead, so you after you commit, you go back to your own repository. It should say this at the top. Do you see this at the top? of your own repository? This branch is one commit ahead of USFCS 212 fall 2020. Yes. Okay, now click pull, click pull request. And then, yeah. And then uh, I can't, I already have an open pull request, so it just added to the pull request, but just fill out the fields there. Um, we create so a new one, right? Create yes. A new, yes, create a new pull request. Yes. And so uh, one thing that I'll ask left to do is go, can you zoom in on your screen? Because uh, there's this, um, under comparing changes, there's a very useful um, um, sort of like a message that we're being given, which is this. Uh, right where it says base repository, uh, USFCS uh, fall 2020 get 101 attendance, right there's asking the base the base being which branch you want to go ahead and make the pull request from, which is main. And then we have here our head repository, which is the repository you just forked, looking at main branch. And then what's that, what that is doing is going to go ahead and compare the main branch you have on your fork with the main branch you have on get 101 attendance, which is the base repository. If, if we say one it, if we wanted to go ahead, once Lev accepts all of these pull requests and does all of this, if he wanted to go ahead and bring those changes back to his own uh, forked repo, he could go ahead and make a pull request that goes the other way around, or he can just go ahead and fetch all the changes that were made to USFCS to the base repository Fetch, the, fetch those changes and bring those changes in, which is essentially a pull request. Yes. Okay. So do we have any other questions? It's 229. I don't want to keep you over. I know people have class, but uh, is, every, is everybody clear? Any Anything else? Um, awesome. Well, it looks like- Hopefully uh, GitHub is, or Git is a little bit more familiar and less scary. Because awesome. We, and it's- 25 out of 25 pull requests too. So everybody did it. We so love I, it. 
Um, yeah. I haven't done it. I'm like confused how to do it. Oh, okay. You're confused how to do it. Yes. Um, I'm on the pull request though. Do you close the pull request? No. If it's open, add Steph to attendance. Is that you or who? Oh, who? no. It's Mar Maria. Oh, it's Maria. Oh, Steph just replied yes. So I that's why I got confused. Okay. Not... Do I click new <laughs> or no? Um, so yeah, yeah, so you made it, you created a pull request. Can so what what does the screen say right now? Like same thing as yours. Oh, okay. No, we want to make sure you are on your fork of this repo. So um yeah, if we see your name there, we're good. Yes. Yeah. So Lev, can you go ahead and um, jump over to the to the fork? Yes. Thank you so much for coming, guys. If you if you're heading out, uh, and thanks for being patient with us while we continue to debug and do our fun good stuff. So, yeah. yeah so as you thanks. like, if. If your screen looks like this and it says this branch is one commit ahead of USFCA or USFCS, uh, does your screen look similar to Lev's? No. Do you have this, uh, this message that says this branch is one commit ahead? Where is that? Can you point it out on the mouse? Um... No, I don't have that. Have you forked the repository? I don't think so. Hold on. I'm like looking for it. Let's start with this. Are you logged into a GitHub account? Yeah, I am. Okay, cool. And then I... I and do you, did you click... When you went to the USFCS one, did you click this button up here? Which button? The fork button. No, I didn't. I went to my profile. I'll I think that might be the reason my why. Screen with you guys. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, okay. please. Yeah, let me. Is it enabled? I don't know if it's enabled. 